Hi there, I'm Sarah Cunnington. Welcome to Drawn from the Word. I've been reading and rereading the book of Ephesians over the last couple of months, and I have been so blessed by this revelation of the glory of the kingdom of God that we share through our faith in Jesus. But the end of Paul's letter takes on a different note because it moves into the realm of spiritual warfare. Have you ever thought how strange it is that our faith, which preaches peace and love, should provoke such hatred and opposition? Well, Paul's words explain why this should be, but they also tell us how we may equip ourselves to deal with it and not be defeated. Once you really start to live as a believer, you will stand out like a sore thumb and you may well find that you suddenly become a lot less popular than you were. You've doubtless heard the expression, putting your head above the parapet. Well, that's what we do when we take a stand for Jesus. And guess what? People will start taking pot shots at us. Who does she think she is? All holier than thou. What about him? He's suddenly got religion. A lot of people won't want to know you anymore, especially if you have turned your back on their religion to follow Jesus. If our reaction to this hostility is to duck back down again and try and blend in with all the unbelievers around us, then we need to ask ourselves if we really do believe that Christ went to the cross for us. Do we fully understand the price he paid for us and how much he loves us? The bottom line is, do we really love him? Or do we love the world and the approval of the world more than the love and approval of God? Just being a Christian puts us in the middle of a spiritual battleground. And we need to be real about that and to make sure we are equipped and ready to face the battle on a daily basis. So let's Look now at Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 20. This is such a well-known passage, and it's vital when it comes to understanding spiritual warfare that we don't skim over it. So, here it is. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, 
which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. It starts with standing firm and resisting the devil, but also resisting the temptation to fight back when people attack us. Resisting arguments and disputes, even when we do not agree with the person. This requires more courage and more self-control than rushing in to defend ourselves. We do this because the people who oppose us are not the enemy. As Paul reminds us, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That's some enemy, but regarding people, we are to be gentle. Yes, gentle even with the most annoying people, but to be firm and strong regarding our spiritual enemy, Satan, and all his minions. We are to stand firm against the devil's schemes, his attempts to wind us up, to make us angry or fearful, or to make us doubt. That does not mean we capitulate and give in to what is wrong. No, we are to stand on the word of God. Jesus did this when he was tempted in the wilderness. He stood firm on the word of God, equally so when he was accused by the Jewish leaders. He didn't get into an argument with Satan or with the teachers of the law. He simply stood firm on the word of God and the Holy Spirit gave him the precise word for each situation and for each accusation. We need to know the word of God. So my enemy is not the person who sends me horrible emails whenever they feel life is treating them unfairly, or the children in my daughter's class who used to bully her. No, our enemy or enemies are the spiritual forces who have control over these people, the forces from which these people need to be saved, need to be freed. Knowing that changes my attitude. It helps me pray with love, with a sincere love, and not to fall into the temptation to be as horrible and hateful as the person who hates me. It's not always easy. So we need to be prepared as attacks can come at any time. The enemy of our soul wants to upset us, wants to make us react. That's why Paul tells us we need to be armed just as a soldier is. Therefore, Put on the full armour of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything, to stand. So let's take another look at this armour, although I'm sure we're all familiar with it. Starting with the belt of truth. Now the truth is found in the word of God and in Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life. These are important spiritual truths. But I think the belt of truth is more practical than that, more basic. It's about how truthful we are when push comes to shove. God desires truth in our inward parts. So how honest are we? not just to God, but to ourselves and to others. 
Are we honest about our weaknesses, our failings and our mistakes? Are we honest in our tax returns, for example? Are we always honest to our spouses, our children, our boss? Or do we try to appear perfect, which may mean pretend to appear perfect? Because the word says that we are to be perfect, just as our Heavenly Father is perfect. But to be honest, when it comes to spiritual warfare, honesty is definitely the best policy. I recently was reminded of Zach Poonen's comment that God honours honesty more than perfection. It's true. My daughter also commented that the truth is like a belt that keeps our trousers from falling around our ankles. Also true. It keeps us from being compromised, from getting tripped up by the enemy who is, after all, the father of lies. Now we come to our hearts being guarded by the breastplate of righteousness, God's righteousness which we all receive when we believe in Jesus and commit our lives to being his disciples. It's not self-righteousness. And if we allow self-righteousness to creep into our hearts, we will soon discover that it does not protect us from the enemy. Self-righteousness actually serves as an open invitation to him to tempt us to all manner of sins, starting with pride. It's about self-love, and such a person should not engage in spiritual warfare. Do you remember the seven sons of Sceva in Acts 19? These Jewish exorcists began to invoke the name of Jesus when they tried to cast out a demon. However, the demon recognised that the men didn't know Jesus. And so the possessed man turned on them and attacked them and overpowered them. Our own righteousness cannot protect us. Only that of Jesus, only the blood of the Lamb, who loves us so much that he died to cleanse us from all sin and whose death defeated death and defeated Satan. Next, we come to the shoes of the Gospel of Peace. These are sturdy shoes and they enable us to run or climb whatever the terrain. God equips us to go wherever he wants so that we can share the good news. And it is good news! So be encouraged and pray that God will lead you to people who both need and want to hear the message of Jesus. But when you find them, be bold. Open your mouth and tell them the good news. After these, Paul talks of the shield of faith. Our faith is and must always be in Jesus, in who he is, in what he has done. We have not saved ourselves. We are saved by his shed blood. The enemy will try and destroy our faith with lies and accusations, perhaps that we are not worthy. Do you know something? You're not worthy, nor am I. But Jesus is, and all those who put their faith in him are made worthy by the amazing gift of his righteousness. So hold fast to your faith. This shield of faith is not only to protect us as individuals, it also protects the whole body of Christ we are to defend one another by faithful prayer. Just as the Roman soldiers' shields overlapped each other, making an impregnable armour above and around 
an advancing group, like the shell of a tortoise or a tank. Then we have the helmet of salvation that protects our minds. We are saved. We belong to Jesus. These are truths that we must remind ourselves of when the enemy tries to sow doubt in our minds. Take that doubt captive. When Satan tries to make you doubt your beliefs and believe your doubts, say, no, no, I believe my beliefs and I doubt those doubts. I refuse them. I bind them. I forbid them. In Matthew 18, verse 18, Jesus gives his disciples and us authority in his name and he tells us that whatever we forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven and whatever we permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. So forbid doubt from entering your mind. The next part of the armour is the sword. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. And as we use the Word of God in prayer, we will see him at work. Remember how Jesus used the Word of God to overcome Satan when he was tempted in the wilderness? Well, we are to do that too. Do not be afraid to speak God's truth, however unpopular it may be. These days it takes courage to say that God created men and women differently and that this difference was good. We must declare the sanctity of marriage between a man and a woman and the sanctity of the life of an unborn baby. These are truths that the church needs to stand by. But that does not mean hating those who hate us for speaking the truth. We must continue to love and pray for them, even when we are attacked and mocked and persecuted. Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Forewarned is forearmed. Finally, we are told to pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. We're to be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Do you do that? Do you pray at work? Do you pray on the way to school, before a meeting? Do we really pray for one another, for our Christian leaders? They are really in the front line and subject to constant attack, a barrage of temptations. Pray that they will not succumb, but resist the devil and stand firm in Christ. What about the wider body? Are Christian brothers and sisters in other cities, other nations, and yes, even other denominations, they are still our brothers and sisters in Christ. Then there are our fellow believers around the world, some of whom suffer terrible persecution. Do you know they pray for us? but they need our prayers just as we need theirs. I recently read the testimony of a British pastor at a prayer meeting when news came through of an Indian brother and pastor who was being rushed to hospital with a life-threatening illness. Despite the distance of continents and oceans, these British Christians began to pray for him in the spirit, to cry out to God for him, both in English and in tongues, in faith that God would heal him, and he was healed. Zechariah 4.6 reminds us, it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord of hosts. Remember, the weapons we fight with are spiritual weapons. They are not the weapons of the world. Remember too that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Don't let this fact make you feel overwhelmed. On the contrary, 
Remember that our weapons have divine power to demolish strongholds, both the strongholds that affect us and the strongholds that affect others. Remember that as you pray for the people who seem to oppose you most frequently and most fervently. And remember, finally, that he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. God bless you and fortify you and enable you to truly stand firm in Christ. Goodbye. Bless you.